Hello everyone, how's it going? So, in today's video, we are officially getting rid of some books. Over here, I have a stack of 22 books that I'm planning on getting rid of. So that number sort of subject to change just because I haven't really done a deep dive into my bookshelf. Just like a quick scan overall in the like past couple of weeks of the books that I feel like I won't be reading anytime soon or just lost interest or just overall didn't like. So yeah, most of these books will be going or donated to used bookstores or um, free little libraries like just across the city. I just really like that concept overall, you know? But before we officially start, I would like to give a quick shout to today's video sponsor, Bright Sellers. So what's really cool about Bright Sellers is that they're a wine subscription based company founded by two MIT graduate students, which in and of itself, the whole idea of a wine subscription service is just genius, okay? So um, for me, I'm sort of like a casual wine drinker. I like white wine over red, just a personal preference of mine. I really like it cold, sweet, and chill. Best way to have it. How it all works with Bright Sellers is that you just go on their website and you take a 30 second quiz and there you just answer seven simple questions where it all sort of caters to your wine tasting needs. And on top of that, if you actually end up not liking the wine that you receive, Bright Sellers will actually send you a free replacement for your next box. It's also really easy, very convenient as every box is shipped right to your door. Also in each box, aside from the wines that you will receive, there's also these educational cards that'll tell you more about the wine, the ingredients, and what pairing works best for that individual wine. Another really great thing about Bright Sellers is that they're sustainable. The packaging that they come in and even some of the ingredients that are in the wine. So if you guys are interested, you guys can check out the link down below to get 50% off your first six bottle box, which in of itself is a really great deal because honestly, books and wine, honestly, one of the better pairings in my opinion. So, all right, and with that being said, thank you to Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video, and now back to your regular broadcast. All right, so 22 books for 2022. I feel like I'm gonna get rid of more books later on sometime in the future, just because I wanna make more room for my shelves. I mean, at this point, I barely have any room to begin with, and honestly, after moving like seven shelves full of books, is something I kind of never want to do again until I find a permanent home. Kind of just want to whittle down my collection in of itself because it's a lot of books, okay? 20 to 30 boxes, small boxes um, at that. It is just backbreaking to move to say the least. Even though I do love the collection and I'm truly grateful, uh, even having the privilege to even own and you know cater to the collection of books um, that I have to begin with. All right, so we have a couple piles here. Um, most of these books are actually just YA, um, some thriller and horror books. I feel like I've read majority of these YA books and a majority of these thriller books I've actually just lost interest in. I won't be going into too much detail regarding what each book is about, so not a lot of reasons there to begin with anyway. You know, there's just something really cathartic and soothing and just relaxing overall of just getting rid of a bunch of books, you know? Alright, so first off, The Road by Cormac McCarthy. This is actually my mom's book. <laughs> um, she was actually like reading this book for some reason, some way or another. It ended up on my bookshelves, probably because it was like the main source of books in our house at the time. Somehow ended up there and I don't even think my mom even finished it, let alone will even continue reading it. I do know that this was made into a movie with Viggo Mortensen and I actually never even had an inkling of even wanting to read this book. So therefore, it's just gonna go. All right, next up is Last to Die by Arlene Hunt. I actually remember picking this book up at a used bookstore and this has actually been sitting on my shelves now for like almost three, four years now. And I feel like it is just continuously just gonna sit there until the end of time. So this one is about a school teacher who survives a school shooting and gets targeted by a serial killer because he views her as a challenge, as a conquest um, that he must conquer and kill. So uh, yeah, that's basically it. The next book is The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. This is one of those books where I actually cannot remember if I actually read it or not because um, I watched the movie like a really, really long time ago and I really, really liked the movie. However, for the life of me, I feel like even if I had read this book, it's like a fever dream. I don't remember reading it like at all. I pretty much know everything there is to know regarding the story in this book anyway, um, so I don't really see myself reading it anytime soon. So next up, we have a trio of thriller books all by the same author, all by Megan Miranda. The first one is All These Missing Girls with Perfect Strangers and The Last House Guest. I don't know, there was something about these covers that initially did intrigue me when I first got them. However, I actually never picked these books up aside from the fact that these covers sounded interesting. I don't even know what these books are about. Prior before filming this video, I obviously looked up each book, read the summary, and uh, safe to say, I don't think any of them are piquing my interest any longer. They pretty much all have like that same vibe, I feel like, with like a small town, a secret, a murder, some journalists trying to track down like their 
Tragic Past or something. So I've also looked at reviews and a lot of you guys were not kind to these set of books overall. Back in the day, if I had read these books as a newly seasoned thriller reader, um, I might have enjoyed and liked these books, but now, currently, I think I could safely say that I probably will not. So, moving on. So the next one is Every Last Lie by Mary Kabika. I've heard a lot of Mary Kabika's books. A lot of them seem to be more misses than hits in general, seen from all the reviews and all the ratings. This one has like a really low Goodreads score. I actually own another book of hers. I'm called Every Good Girl and I'm keeping that one because everyone is just saying the twist in that book is just so damn bad. It kind of piqued my interest on seeing why that twist is so bad. So I kind of want to read it. For this one, I feel like this is like your standard run-of-the-mill thriller, practically the same reason for the other set of books for this one as well, so. All right, next up is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. Listen, I read this a while back, back when I was in college, and I extremely loved it. I feel like this was one of those books where the twist took me completely by surprise. I enjoyed the twist, I enjoyed the stories, I liked the character, I really liked the writing. The writing, I feel like, was just so fast-paced. And I remember reading this, actually taking this book with me in class and just sitting in the back reading this. I really liked it. I gave it like five out of five stars and just the nostalgic memories I had reading this book. But I feel like, you know, it's time to move on. And this author has done some really shady shit. And so far, to my knowledge, he hasn't written another book since. I feel like it's been five or six years now, unless he's writing books under a different name. Do you only really have too much to say about this? Um, I also saw the movie for this one. And I actually prefer the book over the movie. But at the end of the day, we're still getting rid of this one. Next is Slate House by David Mitchell. Getting rid of this one because I actually already own a different copy of this book and I actually prefer that version over this one. Even though this version does have like a really cool, um, like, what is it called? Front cover? I, I forgot what this is called. Embossed? I don't know. So I do know what this book is about. I heard really great things so far and it's also really short as well. So looking forward to reading this, just not this copy. The next one I actually did read and did not like is Reprieve by James Hahn Madsen. I read this for our book club and safe to say, I feel like the marketing for this was just so misleading. Cool cover, nice name, interesting premise, but at the end of the day, I feel like it did not deliver on anything at all. I feel like the entirety of this book was just made up of like backstories from like these different characters. And there's actually no twist in this whatsoever, like at all. You already know who dies, who did it, and how. You're basically just reading up to the events that happened through their backstories, like through their flashbacks. Maybe it could have worked if this novel went into a different direction. I would actually call this more of like a literary thriller, which is really interesting in of itself, but thriller in here is practically non-existent. So, all right, the next one is The Next to Die by Sophie Hanna. I actually read like the first 50 pages, I think, and just didn't end up liking it. So I put it down thinking I'll get back to it someday or another, but that day, unfortunately, will never come. And seeing from all the Goodreads reviews and the rating this book has, it's a big yikes. Also, this is like book 10 in like a huge police procedural story that's in like London. I don't know, when it comes to UK thrillers or when it comes to like police and detective thrillers in general, those just don't do it for me as well as um, certain other types of thrillers. So, all right, the next one I actually had for a while and this is The River at Night by Erica Ferenik. I actually remember this one because one, the cover stood out to me and two, this is like one of the first thrillers or new thrillers that I actually bought like a while back but I actually never ended up you know reading it for whatever reason so this is one of those books where you read the summary and you think to yourself oh wow that sounds great and then like three four years later you read it again and you're like hmm maybe it does sound great anymore so therefore unhauled Next up, I'm getting rid of Meddling Kids and Supernatural Enhancements by Edgar Quintero. I saw these books at a used bookstore and picked these up initially because of the covers. The covers themselves, I mean, honestly, this one is okay. I mean, this one is good, but this one, this one takes the cake for the win. I really like this cover. It's just, again, one of those books I picked up because of the cover and didn't really know too much about it. However, looking at all the reviews and everything and seeing what they're actually about, I actually don't have any inclination of reading these. I also think my reading tastes in general for these books have changed. So, therefore, sadly, getting rid of. All right, next up, all of these books, henceforth out, are all YA. And the first one is Stolen by Lucy Christopher. I actually remember this one because so many people were talking about it like back in the day, back when I think I first started BookTube and I picked it up back then. And I distinctly remember getting this one because I really hated the US cover. I deliberately went on Book Depository to look for this specific cover. I actually got this and all these years later, never even picked it up. And I do know what this book is about, but I feel like if I had read it back then, I probably would have loved it, but now, who's to say, right? Next is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I still have this book and I've kept it with me all these years because of sentimental reasons, nostalgia. You know what? It is just time to move on. Time to move on from the past. And can I actually tell you guys the truth for this one? 
I gave this one, I think, like four, five stars. I can't really remember. I think if I had to give it a rating now, I think I'd have given it like a two or three star. I feel like reading it back then, I didn't fully get the hype that this book got or why people loved the character so much. They were so pretentious when I first read this. Like, I don't know how many years ago it was. And I actually remember reading this at my Catholic church in one sitting um, on the grass, just lying down at a homeschool gathering and just pushing myself to read this. And funny enough, because I wanted to get in with everyone, to get in with the hype and get on that train, you know? I forced myself to cry. I'm like, ugh, I teared up, I cried too. I'm like everyone else, I get it, I'm with y'all, okay? This was like one of the best books I've ever read. So, in a nutshell, sentimental nostalgic vibes with this one. I actually have never touched a John Green book since. Um, so, there you go. All right, next one is Don't Look Back by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Back in the day, Jennifer was, was my go-to Y author. She wrote like a wide variety of books, from this one, a slasher book, to aliens, to like fantasy, to like these different gods and myths. And now, currently, actually last year, I read one of her fantasy books. And that actually killed me a little bit. Actually, a lot, okay? I will never look at Honeydew ever the same way, ever again. I mean, to insinuate that pussy or pussy juice actually tastes like Honeydew, it is just unfathomable to me, okay? I essentially and practically will never read a book from her ever again, and so, um, getting rid of this one. I do know that this was sort of like a slasher type of book, but other than that, pretty much forgotten everything else. So, all right, next one is Loveless by Alice Oseman. Getting rid of this one because I actually did not like it. I actually gave this one two out of five stars. I thought it was okay. I think younger me would have ate it up, loved it. So yeah, I've given my reasons for this book multiple times now. So this book, at the end of the day, it just isn't for me, so. All right, next one is What We Saw. Actually read it, actually really liked it, however, now, I cannot remember a single thing that happened in this book. I looked on Goodreads in my review and I was like, huh, okay, uh, sure, I'll take your word for it, but now I honestly can't remember anything. So, so the next one I actually did read and did actually like, and this is Ruthless. This was like back in the day where I was like looking for all these YA thrillers. I was really into thrillers at that point, but I was only exclusively reading YA thrillers at that time before I stepped further and expanded my thriller reading pool. But I remember liking this one and for the life of me, Absolutely can't remember what this book is about, so unhauling. All right, the next one is Ringer by Andrew Smith. I actually really like this one. I read it like a really long time ago. I feel like I read this back when I first got my first bookshelf, and that was just like another fun, fond memory that I had relating to this book. But aside from that, regarding this book, all I remember is that it's about a boys boarding school where they play a particular sport regarding this main character. And um, looking at the cover, I do remember him getting a nosebleed, and that's pretty much all I remember about it. And so. I do remember having happy vibes and feelings when reading it, but then again, I absolutely cannot remember anything that happened in this book. And so sadly, it has to go. All right, so book number 22, last and not least, we have Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody. This is one of the more recent YA books that I read in like the past two or three years. And so I did like it. I liked the writing, the story, the characters, the atmosphere. However, it's just a book I never will see myself returning to or even reading um, any other books from this author. I think the author has released like four or five books since then and I didn't pick any of them up. But I do remember this book being unique in that it is a standalone. So that has that going for this one, but not enough uh, for me to keep it, so. All right, and so that is pretty much it. Please let me know if you see any of the books here that I'm getting rid of. If there needs to be a strong must read for any of these books, please let me know. Aside from the books that I obviously already read. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you all soon with a new video.